praying for godly intervention in court after threatening school teachers with a machete. So, Pastor Mboro's trial has been moved to October. And this basically means that Pastor Mboro is now going to spend about two months in prison because he's been denied bail. Now, he looks very shocked if uh, some of you have seen the video where his sentence is being read by the judge. And he almost sounds surprised when they're basically telling him that you walked into a school with a machete and uh, AK-47. And, and he, he almost like they were describing something that he had never seen, that he had never done. You know, um, he looked just very surprised. And I think there's an important lesson that we need to overemphasize here. And it's not so much about Pastor Mboro. But I think if you look at the life of Pastor Mboro, there was a BBC documentary done by Ureji where he came to his church, he watched his lifestyle, and Pastor Mboro can be seen as somebody who, who liked the finer things in life. So he didn't exactly try and live a simple life. He, he, tro he drove the most expensive of cars, supercars. He went to the most expensive uh, of places where he could buy clothes. He, he wore very expensive clothes. And he was even confronted by that BBC journalist, Ureji, asking him, you know, should we not try to be live a, a life that is simple? But I think that if you look at the message that he was preaching, it was a message of prosperity. And I think that what has happened to Upastam Mboro is an indication of what has actually gone wrong in the doctrine that we preach in the church. But I want to show you guys quickly this video, and I want to just give you guys four important lessons why we need to preach the right doctrine in the church. Because Upastam Mboro was somebody who was emphasizing miracles, emphasizing prosperity, and we see now that he's lost all of those things. And, and we can actually see that at the foundation, there was no base. There was no Christ in his foundation. And that's why when everything is taken away, you know, he has actually got nothing left. And that's the problem with prosperity, is that it has no foundation. It's just talking about something that's up in the sky. You go to church, you are told that, you know, God wants you to prosper. God wants everything in your life to go well. But when things don't go, go well, a lot of people then begin to turn away from the faith. A lot of people desert Christ, and, and they show their true colors. But I think we need to preach the right doctrine in the church in order for us to really give people a solid foundation that can stand, that can stand any form of difficulty. But let's have a look at this video now, and then I'll give you guys just four important lessons that we can learn from Pastor Mbo. And it is seen that I choose one, two, and three you were hearing. AK-47 and plants of <coughs> crash, uh, kids who were in crash a few months ago, just last week they were in crash. They have, some of these kids have never seen a gun before. Uh, some of these kids have never seen a machete before. But the video footage that is circulating indicates that they were exposed to that. Uh, kids, one, two, and three. I don't think he was very much surprised at the fact that that's what they were accusing him of, but I think Deep down inside, he was surprised that he had actually gotten to the place that he had gotten to. Going from somebody who maybe was seen as a voice of hope. I know some people said, man, this is somebody who brings hope in our community. When we look at him, we think maybe someday we can also get there when we see the, the su success that is projected. But the problem with that is that if your pastor projects success, preaches success, and motivates you based on success, what happens when he is in a position like Upastampor, where he has nothing, where his church has been burnt down, where his money has been taken away, where he's in prison. Now, what motivates you about him when he's somebody who's disgraced like this? And he's not being disgraced for the sake of the gospel, but he's someone who's disgraced because of his disgraceful um, actions. But I want to share with you guys some important lessons. I think that prosperity gospel is, is, is very dangerous. And when we talk about prosperity gospel or prosperity theology, it is the belief that God rewards our faith with health and wealth and success. In other words, if you have enough faith, God will either anoint you more, God will give you more gifts, you'll speak more in tongues, you will prosper, you'll be successful, if you can only just believe. So God rewards us on the basis of what we can do right? So if you have more faith, the more God will be able to do for you. But I think that the biblical perspective 
is always saying that we have moments where we suffer. And in those moments of suffering, God wants us to be content. The same way that Paul says in Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse, verses 11 to 13, where Paul says, I'm, I've learned to be content in all things. He's learned to, to be able to live out his faith when he has nothing, to live out his faith when he has something, because I think this is also important. It's important for us to know how to be Christians when we have. When, we, when God has blessed us with things, we can actually go and bless other people and not make those things more important than God. It's very equally much uh, important that we teach people how to handle success because we always uh, uh, preach to people to say, when you're down, God can bring you up. But what if you are up? How does a Christian behave when God has blessed them? And, and we find a lot of people, when they have money, they actually turn away from God. And we see even with a lot of these preachers, um, prosperity preachers, they start off their sort of ministries as people who are humble, who preach the gospel. But then eventually, when they have the money, then they turn away from preaching the gospel. You know, people like Mike Todd, eventually they're now preaching a gospel about money, about success, and they forget actually to preach the right gospel. So that's what basically we can learn from these legal troubles of uh, Pastor Mboro. It shows us the danger of prioritizing wealth and material success over spiritual integrity. So our spiritual integrity as leaders is more important than how many members you have in your church, how many cars you drive. It's more important to have three or four members in your church, but knowing that you're preaching the right gospel, that you're a person of integrity, that you're not somebody who's going to walk into a school with machetes and with AK-47. So it's important that we understand that the misuse of uh, spiritual authority is also a problem. I think that we've, we've now elevated people or individuals in the church to a, almost like a godlike status where they feel like they have this authority. You know, when they, when they can't get their way, I'm going to go to a school with a bodyguard, with machetes. And, and he's so used to having his way in the church now he thinks he can go to the school and exercise that authority, but it, it just doesn't work like that. So it's important that we have a discussion around the way that we elevate people. Now, I'm not saying we mustn't honor people in the church. Of course, we must honor people. But I think we must also leave room for accountability in the body of Christ, where, where power needs to be checked. The amount of authority without accountability is unhealthy in the church. That's why it's important that we have an eldership that supports the minister, that it works with the minister. But I think that when we give people, you know, absolute power, we, in a sense, we're not protecting them from themselves because the minister needs to be protected from a number of things. But one of the things that we need to protect our ministers from is actually from himself, from the lust of power, lust for women, the lust for success, the... All these things, our ministers need to also be protected. And that's why we need godly men that can come around the, the minister and really support him, but also to, to check you know, and hold him accountable. This is important as we are protecting the flock. You know, Peter tells us that there are you know, certain requirements for an overseer and a bishop. And one of them is to be above reproach. And to be above reproach means that you have no one who can walk up to you and start questioning your integrity. Now, Pastor Mboro, the actions that we see, uh, some of the things that he's doing are actually showing us that this is not someone who's above reproach because now we see even students going to condemn him and burning his church. So, so what we can learn from Pastor Mboro, Mboro is that the misuse of authority, um, it actually contradicts the lessons that have been laid out by Christ for us who came to the world not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a, ran a ransom. So, so the minute we have this misuse of authority, we are actually contradict contradicting the very lessons that Christ has, has laid out for us as leaders in his word. The third lesson that's very important is that when we emphasize miracles or false miracles and signs, because Upasa Mboro was somebody who was known you know, to be performing signs. If you go to his church, you see how some of his videos, he's someone who's seen as performing these miracles and already exposed some of these things, right? And the scriptures are always warning us against false signs and wonders. You know, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, 
um, Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 to 12, the Bible tells us and warns us that people will come performing or claiming to perform miracles. But actually, these are people who are here to deceive. These are people who are here to mislead the flock. But if we focus on preaching the gospel and we emphasize the importance of centering our Christian faith on the gospel and not on, on miraculous signs, because here's an important thing, is that the gospel calls you to change, to transform. But miracle signs are always saying, well, if we can just change your situation without changing you, then we would have succeeded. But the gospel doesn't bypass you. The gospel says there is no form of transformation that can happen in your life, in your church, in your community that will bypass the transformation of the individual. And the transformation of the individual comes and begins when the preaching of the word begins to penetrate our hearts when the truth is told, it's the truth that begins to liberate. It's the truth that will make a leader be transformed and be a transformer of his community. But if a leader doesn't preach the truth, if a leader doesn't understand the truth, well, we're seeing that now instead of transforming his community with the gospel, we see that his community has burnt down his church. It's because we're not emphasizing or preaching the truth enough. So this is why we need to move away from deception and uh, all these emotional uh, sort of emphases in, in our gospel and really come more to a more Bible-based way of preaching. It's important that we preach sound doctrine in our churches. Doctrine matters, and, and it's, it's, it's very necessary for grounding us in our faith because when we ground grounded in biblical truth, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter who comes to take away what from us. But when we are grounded in the gospel, in biblical truth, no one can take that away. I think there are consequences of, of us teaching false doctrines. For an example, I think that when we teach false doctrine, um, it, it's a deviation from biblical truth. That's the first thing. But I think that the danger is that if you misunderstand the, God, the, way, the word of God, then I think that it's very easy for you to also misteach the word of God. I think if you misteach the word of God, you can then also misapply it. So the problem doesn't just start with an application. It doesn't just start with, with, with our application, but it actually starts with our interpretation. Do we truly understand what God is saying to us in his word? Do we truly understand the scriptures? Do we submit ourselves to what the scriptures are trying to tell us? That's really what will determine the type of church that we're going to be. We're not going to be determined by, you know, how many rich people come to our church, how fancy the pastor's car is, or how many congreg congregants we have in our church. But really, it's going to come down to the fact that is God the authority in the church? Are the scriptures the sole authority? Where what God says is what's more important than what the pastor says. Because there's an important distinction that needs to be made. The pastor, when he preaches from the front, his authority only comes when he preaches the word of God. The minute he stops preaching the word of God, he's lost his authority because his authority comes from the word of God. That's what gives him the authority to preach. That's what's give, giving him the authority to teach. It's God's word. So, so when ministers move away from that and they begin to preach miracles, they begin to preach their own ideas, whatever comes from their head, I believe that that is when we begin to lose the authority and then we begin to misuse our authority because actually the authority that ministers have it's been given by God but the minute we don't acknowledge God and then try to insert our own authority outside of God's authority outside of the scriptures that's when we will begin to abuse and misuse the scriptures this is Bisrat for Africa if you've enjoyed this video I want to encourage you guys to like to share to subscribe um, if there are people maybe who might enjoy these videos I want to encourage you to share them uh, with them. We'll see you guys on the next video.